This is the first video for facility management and safety, also called environmental safety, in which I will give a brief introduction to this important chapter. For more videos, visit my Facebook page, Healthcare Quality. Healthcare organizations work to provide safe, functional, and supportive facilities for patients, families, staff, and visitors. Safety is a prime concern in hospitals, where people deal with hazardous and toxic materials and all kinds of gases and flammable liquids on a daily basis. To reach this goal, the physical facility, medical and other equipment, and people must be effectively managed. In particular, management must strive to reduce and control hazards and risks, prevent accidents and injuries, and maintain safe conditions. Effective management includes multidisciplinary planning, education, and monitoring as follows. The leaders plan the space, equipment, and resources needed to safely and effectively support the clinical services provided. All staff are educated about the facility, how to reduce risks, and how to monitor and to report situations that pose risk. Performance criteria are used to evaluate important systems and identify needed improvements. Written programs are developed and include the following six areas when appropriate to the facility and activities of the organization. One, safety and security. Two, hazardous materials. Three, emergency management, four, fire safety, five, medical equipment, six, utility systems. Safety of the building, the degree to which the organization's buildings, construction areas, grounds, and equipment do not pose a hazard or risk to patients, staff, or visitors. Security management, protection from loss, destruction, tampering, or unauthorized access or use. Hazardous materials and waste disposal management, handling, storage, and use of radioactive and other materials are controlled and hazardous waste is safely disposed. Internal and external emergency preparedness plan. Risks are identified and the response to epidemics, disasters, and emergencies is planned and effective, including the evaluation of the structural integrity of patient care environments. Fire safety management. Conducting ongoing assessment of risks to enhance protection of property and occupants from the fire and smoke. Medical equipments. Equipment is selected, maintained, and used in a manner to reduce risks. Utility systems. Electrical, water, and other utility systems are maintained to minimize the risks of operating failure. When the organization has non-hospital entities within the patient care facilities to be surveyed, such as independently owned coffee shop or gift shop, the organization has an obligation to ensure that these independent entities comply with the following facility management and safety programs. Safety and security programs, 
hazardous materials programs, emergency management programs, and fire safety programs. Laws, regulations, and inspections by local authorities determine in large part how a facility is designed, used, and maintained. All organizations, regardless of size and resources, must comply with these requirements as part of their responsibilities to their patients, families, staff, and visitors. They are knowledgeable about the details of the physical facilities they occupy by performing regular facility inspections. They proactively gather data and carry out strategies to reduce risks and to enhance the patient's care environment. The scope of each hospital safety management program is to provide to patients, personnel, and visitors a physical environment free of hazards and to manage activities proactively through risk assessment to reduce the risk of injuries. The objective of this program is to control known and potential safety hazards. The safety management program places an emphasis on the following. Provision of education to all personnel on the elements of the safety management program. In servicing all personnel on the use and how to complete incident reports. Ensuring safe work practices and conditions. Reducing the risk of safety-related incidents by proactively evaluating systems in place and making necessary changes through the Safety Committee, Quality Improvement Committee, Administration, and Department participation. The Safety Officer and the Safety Committee are responsible for developing, implementing, monitoring, and managing the safety management program. Together with designated department safety wardens who will be responsible with department heads for the safety issues within their departments. Teamwork is the key to safety. Thank you.